The idea of a garden has always been central to Islam for reasons that are at once hopeful. Because nature is so beautiful and deeply melancholy. Because life itself can never be made perfect. For Islam, the world we inhabit will always be mired in khata or sin. No human enterprise or institution can ever be without significant degrees of dham or wrongdoing, jealousy, stubbornness, rage and lack of forgiveness predominate. Only in the next life can we hope to escape the irritation and the agony. Only in Jannah or Paradise will we be assured of true contentment. In Paradise, according to the Quran, there will be flowing rivers, flowers, incorruptible waters and unchangeable milk. Golden goblets, virgin companions of equal age and rows of cushions set out in the balmy shade of fruit trees. Yet because this might all be a long way off, Islam recommends an unusual technique to prevent us from losing our pious and despairing. We should become Bustani or gardeners. The enlightened should redirect their frustrations with the state of humanity towards the construction of a hadika or wall garden. Within its limited circumference, with due modesty, it can be endowed with many of the qualities of the eventual garden of paradise. Our garden should have flowing water, some reflecting pools, symmetrical flower beds, fruit trees and places to sit. Everywhere that Muslim civilization spread, gardens developed along with it. And in the drier regions where nothing would grow, flowers and trees were represented on carpets, which functioned as miniature mobile gardens that could be carried on the back of a camel. When the Muslims reached southern Spain, the climate allowed them to create pieces of horticulture which astonish and seduce us to this day. A telling observation about gardening is that almost everyone over the age of 65 is concerned with it. And almost no one in their late teens have ever evinced the slightest interest in it. The difference is not coincidental. A person's enthusiasm for gardening is inversely correlated to the degree of hope for life in general. The more we believe that the whole of existence can be rendered perfect, that love and marriage can be idyllic, that our careers can reward us materially and honor us creatively, the less time we will have for bits of laurel or thyme, lavender or rosemary. Why would we let such minor interventions detain us when far greater perfection is within reach? But a few decades on, most of our dreams are liable to have taken a substantial hit. Much of what we put our faith in professionally and romantically will have failed and at that point we might be ready to look with different and significantly more sympathetic eyes at the consolations offered by cypress trees and mitral hedges, geraniums and lilies of the valley. No longer will gardening be a petty distraction from a mighty destiny but rather a shelter from gusts and squalls of despair. Islam is appropriately wise in its ambitions. It does not tell its followers to plot themselves a farm, nor does it advise them to focus on a window box. The scale is carefully calibrated. Neither too big to mire us in unmanageable expense and bureaucracy, nor too small to humiliate and sadden us. The garden becomes a perfect home for our remaining pleasures in the troubled world. It's where we can repair to contemplate islands of beauty once we have come to know and sorrowfully navigated oceans of pain.